Oi right, guys, Hatch Crabic again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Big rumours circulating over the last 24 hours or so about a major CDL overhaul arriving into Modern Warfare 3 in the very near future indeed. Back in December now, we heard rumours there was a big change coming and then we saw a relatively minor spawn update arrive that we thought was potentially the big overhaul that Sledgehammer were apparently promising behind the scenes. Now though, we have rumours of the actual overhaul, it seems, with major changes to the way the game is going to be played, especially even in terms of hardpoint rotations. Parasite reckons that there's a good chance this update might even arrive into the game over the next couple of weeks before the Major begins. If that's the case, the pros might be playing an entirely new game just in time for the Major, causing complete chaos. This has happened before. It may well happen again. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to dive into. Firstly, wanted to mention actually for you guys, I thought this is really cool, just to see um, well, this kind of collaboration. But let's go on the right-hand side here, Mark Grigsby. He's been involved in Infinity War for some time, but it seems like now, based on, um, well, this tweet, that he is now the Infinity Ward studio head. Now, I don't know if he was previously the co-head with this other guy, Pat Kelly, but um, just there was a lot of discussion that potentially Pat Kelly, who was the previous studio head, okay, is actually now the franchise director, so that's right, I, I remember this now, this guy was working in Infinity Ward, now he's kind of stepped up to the next level at Activision, but still, Mark Grigsby, OG Infinity Ward developer, apparently super passionate guy, he's now stepped up to kind of lead the show at Infinity Wars. So um, with Pat Kelly now kind of stepping away, and you can argue whether that's into a more a position with more responsibility and more decision-making power or not, this potentially is a good sign for Infinity Ward because the general feeling about Infinity Ward is that, well, back in the day, MW2, MW3, you know, COD4, there was original games, Infinity Ward, great developer, but um, they did somewhat lose their way, I would say, over the last um, maybe decade or so, or certainly over the last five years. Even Pat Kelly here said in 2022 that, um, you know, he has absolutely zero interest in doing jetpacks or anything like that. Definitely that's not returning because, you know, he doesn't like it, so it's not going to happen. But apparently now he's somewhat out of the picture, and, um, well, maybe that's going to help Infinity Ward somewhat. I don't really know. I still don't have massive confidence in them to deliver a good title, but we shall see. We don't have an Infinity Ward game for another couple of years now because it's going to be, well, Treyarch, Treyarch, we think, and then maybe another Infinity Ward in 2026, possibly, I don't know, it depends on Microsoft's plan, I suppose, at the end of the day as well. Quickly, from the FaZe side, this I thought was pretty cool as well, that FaZe Clan Black are doing their own Challengers tournament. Again, it does blow my mind how the community has to just come together and effectively do Challengers for the CDL, because they can't do it themselves, so, you know, we need the community or FaZe or Zoom or whoever to step in and make this happen, so yeah, 1k price Ball. It's going to well happen. Well, the qualifier is tomorrow, so maybe there's still time to sign up and all this type of good stuff. Speaking of phase, they did put together this retired COD Pro tier list. So um, here we go. We've got Zoom with the backgrounds, the Atlanta phase, Ben J. Deceivers here as well. And I'm not going to lie. I think that some of the pros have got to be like the worst people ever at ranking things, you know? Not always, but I feel like Ben gets roasted so much, or oh, he wasn't a pro, he doesn't understand things. But um, and then the pros do their rankings, and I'm like, what are they cooking, you know? So even Too Quick wasn't happy because he was put down here with the D tier with Ben, and he was like, look, come on, you really put me with some slob that never even, you know, watched play before? I promise you, I wasn't that bad. I was actually very dominant at one point. If MW3 had a CD, I'd have been the MVP with ease. But, um, yeah, so he's down here in the D tier. But this is the rest of the list for you guys. Look, there's a lot of er there's a lot of things I would change here, I think. I would also tighten up the S tier somewhat. Like, I would just have the S tier. And I know that Zoom and Replays are kind of put tier four. Jokingly, shall we say. Okay, Crowder, right? I called him Replays because this is the order pitch, but he's now Crowder. So, you know, where you put them is another debate. And Zoom was like, oh, well, no, it's just a joke. But, right, okay, where do you think you belong? You know, you're A tier, you B tier, like, whatever the case is. I think I would tighten up the S tier somewhat. I would just have it really as like, um, you know, the, the Optic Dynasty, the Complexity Dynasty, and of course, there's a lot of overlap there. And then I would probably just put JCAP and like maybe Apathy in there as well. I don't personally think players like John or players like Octane are S tier, as far as I'm concerned. But um, I think with Octane, phenomenal player, of course, but I think there's a bit of recency bias in terms of how well he did like in the latter end of his career. And he did well early on as well, but I'm not, he, I don't think he had an S tier career personally. Might be
be a hot take. Big T was absolutely S tier for his time, but maybe nowadays you look back on the careers, it's a bit of a different story. A tier as well, it's like, you know, I think a lot of the players in the A tier here are justified. I know what was getting roasted most here, and it's always Zinni, isn't it? It's always Zinni that gets cooked. So, you know, we've got to do it again because it was the big talking point. The fact that Zinni's found himself here in A tier, in the same tier as players like you know, and even Aqua's here as well. I'm just so confused what's going on here, to be honest. But um, yeah, the A tier, we've got Enable, we've got Slacked in here, we've got Nade Shots, you know, we've got Parasite, we've got World Champions, we've got multiple championship winners like Killer, like Saint Renato, and all these guys, you know, Proofy's up here, and, um, you know, and then, <laughs> like, Zinni's in the same tier, and, like, Aqua's here, Zero's here, Chino's here, like, I just don't really get it. And then in the B tier, we've got Jer, too. Okay, sure, he didn't win that many events, but an absolutely phenomenally talented player. And he's in the same tier as, like, Waskin and, like, Lacefield and guys like this that, you know, never quite had so much success. I don't really know what's going on with this list, to be honest. But um, yeah, there's many things I think I would change, to be honest. And I'm sure there's many more than just this that I haven't mentioned. But the big talking point really has come out of Parasite over the last 24 hours or so as to what the game is going to look like in the very near future. Now, Sib was having a few words to say to this guy and also actually to Parasite himself. I thought this is pretty outrageous of Sib, really, that uh, Parasite says, because he's been working on his gym grind lately. Parasite's been dropping a lot of weight and really good for him. And as he says, going to the gym on days where you want to is easy. Going on the days you don't want to, those are the days that make the difference. And this is, you know, absolutely correct. And it's a good insight here from Parasites. Do you want it? Do you need it? And then Sim says, bro should have tweeted this a decade ago, which I thought was like so out of pocket, to be honest. But, um, you know, it's Parasite, I thought, a pretty mature response. Never too late to change. And there's a few things in the replies here. And Jacob's like, look, grow up, bro, and all this stuff. But um, yeah, I thought this was pretty outrageous. I guess he ratioed him technically. But um, yeah, pretty fun. Funny, I guess whatever angle you want to take on that I suppose is up to you but this is what Parasite has to say elsewhere on the potential state of the game so there were rumors going around I would say three weeks after release really back in late November early December that there was a big update coming that was going to change things significantly then this update arrived with season one or whatever it was when the the spawns changed right the terminal spawns especially some of the other spawns have changed and that was um the theory was okay maybe that was the big change that we were waiting for and it was a relatively substantial change but it's not something crazy and um, okay maybe it makes terminal terrible maybe they need to put grease in we talked about that yesterday as possibilities but it hasn't changed anything super dramatically right the teams are now practicing on it they've got used to the new spawns I imagine kind of already but um they were far like the spawns that they changed in that patch update were far from better even you could argue it's not like they fixed everything it's not like the game now plays great in the same way that Infinity Ward when they made Infinite Warfare back in 2016 20 2017 season that game was pretty trash for Hardpoint early on, but at some point they did a spawn update, and Infinite Warfare legitimately became one of the best Hardpoint games ever. Like, it was fantastic after the spawn update, like Breakout Hardpoint. Just a great game for Hardpoint, as far as I'm concerned. After a big spawn update. The spawn update that Sotoman did here in December didn't really do much, and you could argue it's made the game play worse. And there's also other things that people have been calling since day one to change that didn't change. So now we're hearing that actually there is another big change coming. And maybe because Christmas, New Year's, you know, Thanksgiving, like that kind of holiday break, it took longer to execute this than was initially intended. But apparently, as Parasite says, this is ready to go. Also, they're supposed to be changing hills before uh, Boston, supposedly. Uh, so, yeah, they do it. I swear to God, I'll break my monitor. Uh, so they suppose- I will break my monitor. Supposedly, I supposedly. I was, I was told by somebody that I know no that, that the hills are ready. This supposed better what, be some- As far really as them- as far all as maps? yeah, like all the maps, or uh, uh, yeah, shit. like they're switching hills. Oh supposedly, God. supposedly. But I mean, change people have invasion spawns and or the hill. Or I don't yeah, know if they're going to release magic. it until after or before Boston. So apparently, based on various feedback over the first, I guess, suppose few weeks, couple of months of the title, there is now what Parasite calls an overhaul. So Ghost of Hope says, "My question is, does this mean a complete overhaul? Are we talking about stuff like P3 and P4 and Terminal swapping places?" But um, you know, Parasite says that no, it's not just a couple of hills swapping places in order. It's like a complete overhaul in terms of, I'm guessing, spawns, but also hardpoint rotations or even where the hardpoint 
points are. That's another point, because people have also said this about certain maps, that, you know, what if you move the hard point somewhere else? There's another Infinity Ward example. You guys might remember, was it Scorch Search and Destroy back in Infinite Warfare, where they moved the, I think it was the A-bomb, something the B-bomb site. They moved it around like three times. It was in like three different spots. They kept changing where the bomb site was because people complained, and um, eventually they found probably a slightly better solution. But they did make what you'd probably consider to be pretty substantial changes back then, and apparently that's going to happen again. So we're not just talking about, you know, P3, P4 on Terminal being swapped around, or like, um, even this is an example, right? P2 Skid Row could be bottom instead of top, right? That's something people have said, because top P2, so hard to break into, whereas bottom P2, theoretically, it's easier because you don't quite have the sight lines for the player in the hard point defending it than you do from the top of the hard point. So, you know, there's a few tweaks that people have suggested, but apparently we're getting a lot of changes. Now, the question really is, when is this actually going to be happening? And Parasite also says that apparently... And this is so hard to believe, and Bean says he's delusional, but Parasite says, look, don't shoot the messenger, I'm just telling you what I was told. There's maps designed for competitive that are coming, that the devs want us to play. So, you know, are they going to arrive too late? And we talked about it yesterday, by the time maps arrive, some teams say, well, no, I actually like Terminal. It might be a terrible map for Harpoint in the new spawns, but if teams kind of aren't terrible at it, and they think they can get wins against better teams on it, then they might vote for it to stay. That's another question entirely. But the big point is, when is all this actually arriving, right? When are these changes hitting the timeline? Are they hitting the game? Because, again, it's funny, all these examples come from Infinite Warfare. But during Infinite Warfare, I'm pretty sure it was CWL Paris 2017, on the Saturday morning, a patch update dropped, which literally moved one of the uplink portals on, I think it was Throwback, maybe. So the players turned up on Saturday, and they were trying to go for the the one point throws that they've been doing the day before and they couldn't work out why they were missing turns out they changed the um they changed the entire game mid weekends now maybe Sotomar are wise enough to realize that okay maybe we shouldn't drop this patch update before the major because if they do and everything changes like a few days before the major happens that creates absolute chaos but it's happened before and if they've been sitting on this patch update for a while are they going to want to wait another month to drop it they might not want to. So they might just drop it, you know, next week or something and say, you know, well, at least you've got one weekend of qualifiers to prepare before the major happens, which then, you know, puts a massive spanner in the works in terms of who's actually going to be good or bad. And also, maybe the pros still play on the old patch for now, but then the challengers players get screwed over when they then go to the major and they play on the new stuff. Because I'm pretty sure the way the setups work, the challengers guys always have to end up on the new newest patch update. The pros don't necessarily. So um, lots of questions on this over the last couple of days. Very much intrigued your thoughts in the comment section below. Just one final thing to close out we thought was kind of cool here from FaZe Cod Muse. So far on MW3, there's been six players that have got an entire round of control without a kill. Of these six, only two of them, Clay and Hook, of course, former teammates, former world champions together on Dallas Empire, have managed to regain to finish the, the respective maps positive. Now, um, this is pretty funny that Clay had a zero in 10 round, which is pretty tragic, right? I mean, you've only got 30 lives. To lose 10 lives by yourself and get zero kills is pretty tragic but um yeah he still ended the map with a 1.16 kd so yeah clay says solid regain but very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time